Welcome to Electron Online, and in order to help us understand better how we think the solar system formed, we actually were able to put a computer simulation together. Now, I'm not talking myself, this is done by astronomers and scientists, but what they did was they wrote a large program where you assume we have the sun, currently the sun that we have today, and we had about 100 planetesimals. So they said, let's start with 100 planetesimals, relatively large, strong bodies, uh, the size of asteroids, large asteroids, small planets, small moons, kind of like that. And so we assumed that the inner solar system was just filled with about 100 of these. And so we then put in that all the equations of gravity and all the interaction we would expect from them. Notice that many of the orbits, they would be uh, crossing one another with opportunities for collisions and so forth. And then, of course, there's so many of them with the gravitational attraction. They would kind of interact in each other and kind of move each other around. The orbits would not be stable orbits. They would be unstable orbits where the eccentricity would constantly be changing and the speeds would, they would speed up and slow down because of the eccentricity orbits. And so we let loose on the program, then we'd see what would happen. So we kind of fast forward to, through time using the computer simulation. And what eventually would happen is that the 100 planetesimals would then just tend to then uh, slowly over time collide to the point where they would assimilate each other. They would kind of accrete one another and eventually end up with about 20 of these protoplanets. Maybe you can still call them planetesimals, but then at that point, it would be much larger. They would have a much larger gravitational influence on each other. And so then if we continued running the program, what was interesting, and eventually we ended up with four planets, just like our inner solar system. So it would seem reasonable that in the amount of space that was available and the amount of matter that was in that space, that we would eventually end up with something like what we actually see in our solar system, four uh, terrestrial planets spaced out in such a way that they would easily then accrete all the inf all the debris that was out there. And of course, not all of it has been accreted. We know that in the case of the Earth, there's at least a thousand objects, some of them relatively large, that still cross the Earth's orbit and that we could be impacting at any time. And we sometimes still do, just like we did a few years ago when a meteor slammed into uh, a, a region in Russia close to a city and actually knocked out quite a few windows in that city when it did. So these events are still occurring. So that was, of course, the case in a large extent in the early part of the solar system. But now that we have the four planets as the end result of all that, that process, they still are slowly sweeping out the debris that is left over from the formation of the solar system. Imagine the solar system is 4.6 billion years old and yet today we're still encountering the leftovers of the very early stage of the solar system when the whole inner solar system was filled with many hundreds of thousands of those planetesimals. Over time, as they got bigger and accreted more and more of the material, they swept out the inner solar system and it became clean, and now we just have the four planets left with a little bit of debris out there, and over time, that debris will slowly be assimilated as well. It may take a while, may take billions of years yet, but the planets are working on it. So that's how we went from the early solar system to the solar system that we have today. And it's amazing how the simulation that we programmed in actually seems to verify that the solar system we have today was the one that we would have ended up with, with the amount of material that was there, the size of the sun, the radiation present, all that, differentiating the heavy material from the light material, blowing all the gases out to the far regions of our solar system. And that's how we ended up with the solar system we have today. Kind of interesting how that worked.